if this is wisdom, that you will find it here. If it is grace or mercy, that likewise you will find it here. So I invite you this morning to come, to come just as you are, some weary, some worn, some tired, some beat down, some excited, some filled with joy. For indeed, my brothers and sisters, my siblings and friends, we come before the Lord and the Lord receives us as the Lord's own. So I invite you to take the time to let everything that you experienced this morning pour over you, wash over you, give you strength and give you energy, give you vitality, whatever it is that you need this day. So indeed, welcome, welcome to worship. The scripture from today comes from Acts 8, 26 through 40. Then an angel of the Lord said to Philip, get up and go toward the south to the road that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. This is a wilderness road. So he got up and went. Now there was an Ethiopian eunuch, a court official of the Candace, queen of the Ethiopians, in charge of her entire treasury. He had come to Jerusalem to worship and was returning home. Seated in his chariot, 
he was reading the prophet Isaiah. Then the spirit said to Philip, go over to this chariot and join it. So Philip ran up to it and heard him reading the prophet Isaiah. He asked, do you understand what you are reading? He replied, how can I unless someone guides me? And he invited Philip to get in and sit beside him. Now the passage of the scripture that he was reading was this, like a sheep he was led to the slaughter and like a lamb silent before its shearer, so he does not open his mouth. In his humiliation, justice was denied him. Who can describe his generation? For his life is taken away from the earth. The eunuch asks Philip, about whom, may I ask you, does a prophet say this, about himself or about someone else? Then Philip began to speak, and starting with his scripture, he proclaimed to him the good news about Jesus. As they were going along the road, they came to some water, and the eunuch said, look, here is water. What is to prevent me from being baptized? He commanded the chariot to stop, and both of them, Philip and the eunuch, went down into the water, and Philip baptized him. When they came up out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord snatched Philip away. The eunuch saw him no more, and went on his way rejoicing. But Philip found himself at Azotus, and as he was passing through the region, he proclaimed the good news to all the towns until he came to Caesarea. The word of the Lord. Good morning, church. It is good to be with you. Even though we are distant and afar, it is good to be in worship one more time and again as we come before our God. Will you pray with me, please? Holy One, as I come and I stand here, I invoke your spirit, O oh God, to pour over me, to wash me, to cleanse me anew. O oh God, let the very words I speak, the very moves I make, the very actions I take, be those that exemplify, exemplify and lift up your word. Help me, O oh God, in this moment. Indeed, O oh God, we have been through many ups and downs this past week. Some come to this word joyously, some come with questions, some come with wonderment. Whatever place we come from, allow us, O oh God, to hear what you desire to be said, that lifts up, builds up, strengthens us, O oh God, for the journey, that feeds us in a way, O oh God, that you desire. Help us right now, in this very hour, help me. I ask this in the most humble name, the humble name of your resurrected Savior, our resurrected Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Again, good morning to you all. As we come to hear this scripture placed before us this day. And as Madison will know, uh, I, I wrestled with the title of this sermon this week. I, I wrestled with it and then it came very clear. Wilderness road toward inclusion. Wilderness road toward inclusion. No matter how I read this text, that piece around the wilderness road just kept being permeated in my mind. And at one point it was this sense of, 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 of all are welcome. And, 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 and then there was something that that wasn't enough. That welcome was not enough. And, and this text has been used to talk about welcome, but welcome is not enough for this text. Because this text for me is far more than simply about welcome. It's about that sense of wilderness road toward inclusion. There are many types of wilderness roads, my friend. I'm going to name a few, but I'm sure you can think of some others. There is a wilderness road that one travels when one thinks about equality among God's people. It's a tough road to travel. It's a hard road to travel. And quite often when you're talking about equality, it is a road that is traveled alone. A few will tread that road. Because in some ways, equality for all means that I may not have my upper portion, my, 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 my stuff. And, and that sense of sharing is still an issue and a concern for us as God's people. There's a wilderness road of justice. 
There is a wilderness road when you're talking about justice. If you don't believe me, ask someone like Fannie Lou Payment. If you don't believe me, I want you to ask someone like Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King. There are so many great saints who have come before us who have sought justice. If you don't believe it's a wilderness road, ask those who are, who are supporting Black Lives Matter or who are standing against Asian racism. If you don't believe it's a wilderness road, it is a wilderness road when you talk about justice, when you talk about equality. When you talk about the LGBTQ I community, it's a it's a it's a wilderness road. It's not a road well traveled. And when it is, there's awful oftentimes some other medium that's included in there when we travel this road. But for those who are true to the word, that it's a wilderness road to travel. When you look at our society today and you talk about gun violence, it's a wilderness road to travel down that path. Because somehow we've allowed a group called the NRA to have such great power over, over us and how we function as a body, as a people. But it's a wilderness road when you talk about controlling and, 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 and guns, when you talk about police violence, when you talk about violence in general, it's a wilderness road when you go down this path. Because so many of us want to say we need guns. It's in our rights. It's in our, it's in our mode. But it's a wilderness road to talk about how these weapons are used to hurt, harm, and danger when 17-year-olds and, and seven-year-olds and, and three-year-olds are being shot maliciously. It's still a wilderness road. Why? <laughs> Woo! It's a wilderness road for us to travel. If you don't believe we don't have some wilderness roads, look at when we talk about our economy, our economic system. It's a wilderness road to talk about looking for those who are at the bottom that they might be raised up. Is that not our call? But it's, it's a struggle when we talk about looking at how we see our economy and how it's made for those who are the rich, for those who are, and I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to throw, uh, throw the upper middle class in there, the middle class in there, when we are not looking at those who are struggling the least and the lonely. We're not looking at those who are poor, not just simply P-O-O -O poor, but those who are P-O poor. They can't even afford the O-R. Indeed, it's a wilderness road to talk about how we might look at how we do our uh, economic might and our academic plight, how we will look at how we can hold on and tax, and tax the rich less, but tax those who are less than more. And if you don't believe we, it's a wilderness road, look at our politics. Our politics today is a wilderness road to travel when you are trying to, to look at what is right and what is true. If anything our former president told us, if anything our former president showed us is that it's a wilderness road to stand up for justice and peace. That it's a wilderness road in a political, in a political arena to look at everyone as a, as a true human being and not looking at them as them versus they. It is a, it is a, it's a difficult road. It's a wilderness road that we travel. So my friends, there may be other wilderness paths, but, but these are just a few that I just want to lift up for you because some of you might be wondering, well, well Michael, what, what, what sort of wilderness roads are we talking about? There are so many wilderness roads that we are called to travel. And I want you to know something. You and I are not called to travel every one of these roads. I want to be very clear about that. You and I can't travel every one of the wilderness roads that exist, but we are, we are called, I want to believe, to travel one. But even broader than this, even broader than this, when you travel the wilderness road, when you travel the wilderness road, there is something at the, at the back end of this. There's something at the front end of this. And that word is inclusion. You see, when you travel a wilderness road, it is about, in, in this case, it is about how do we include? How, what is this wilderness road about? If we're looking at, at this as an inclusivity, when we talk about equality and justice, that means that no person of color would be worried about how they live and how they move if it was all inclusive. When you travel that wilderness road, that is the goal, to have inclusivity of all humankind. It is that sense of inclusivity of all of those. No matter how God has made you, you are included in the work and the word of God. That is a wilderness road about inclusivity that creates an issue for us in society. And yet we have this text before us this morning, this text of some 2000 years ago that is still permeated in our minds and, and still alive today. Because as I've just mentioned, we still have plenty of wilderness roads that we are continually need to travel. But in this particular text, in this particular text, Philip 
Philip, who has, has been preaching in Samaria. If you want to go back up uh, 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 the beginning of the chapter, uh, uh, you'll see that, 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 that Philip has been working, working the city. He's been working the, 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 the area and, and where the people are. He's been working in the, in the, in the, in the populated areas and, tr- and teaching them and telling them about Jesus. But here, here he is being asked to go down the wilderness road. My friends, I'm not so sure that, I, that this road is one that's so dusty and murky in its presence, but he's being asked to go down a dusty and murky road, a dangerous road, because he's been asked, he's gonna be confronted with something that is not the norm and accepted in the, in the society in which he lives. See, if you look at Deuteronomy chapter, chapter 26, I believe, around the first verse, you'll find that, that what he's going to be doing is going to be going against the grain on this wilderness road. He's by himself. And sometimes, my friends, on the wilderness road, you and I have to travel it by ourselves. We have to stand up and be who we are on our own with God's help. And maybe others join us, but maybe they don't. In this case. In this case, Philip is, is told to go down this wilderness road, not, not having a plan, not knowing why, but, he, but because God asks him to, because the spirit directs him to, because the angel comes to him. He goes down this road. And as he's going down the road uh, to Gaza from Jerusalem, he, 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 there's, a, there's a eunuch in, in, in his chariot coming from the city who has been there, who has been praying, we are told, worshiping. We don't know if he's Jew or Gentile, but I'm going to assume that because he's reading the Holy Scriptures that he might be Jewish as he's coming back from, from, from Jerusalem. And he's traveling down the road and, and he's reading Scripture. And as he's reading, he is, uh, Philip is, is told once again, listen, go over to him. Philip runs. He didn't walk. He ran to catch up with the chariot. I might have said, well, Lord, listen, that's, uh, that's a long way for me to go. I, I, you know, I, I don't know if I can go chase after him, but that is not what Philip does. Philip travels his wilderness road and he goes down to, to, to talk with this eunuch, not knowing actually who he was with. But we are told in text that it indeed was a eunuch. A eunuch, as one, as one writer tells me, is, is, is a person of queer sexuality, different. And indeed, this is something that was not welcomed, as in Deuteronomy 26 will remind us. It was not something that was welcomed, that, that he would not be able to enter into the kingdom of God. And yet, here the Spirit is asking him to go. And I want to believe the Spirit is asking him to go because we have Deuteronomy in, in the text of Deuteronomy, but we'd flip over to Isaiah, and Isaiah tells a different text. And Isaiah says that, 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 that all are welcome, that you are included into this kingdom, that there is an inclusivity of all of God's children, no matter what they have been through, no matter who they are, no matter what their body style, body shape, sexual orientation, that they are all welcome. And so here is Philip, Philip, who would, in my imagination, would know both of these texts, would know the text that is that is in Deuteronomy and that would know the text that is in uh, Isaiah. And yet we don't hear him talking about it. What we hear is a it's an obedience to the spirit in his heart. So he goes over and he hears the eunuch talking and reading the scripture and, and he asks him, do you know what you're reading? Sometimes, my friends, when you go down the wilderness road, you got to ask some questions. Don't go in there with all the answers. Don't go in there thinking you got it all figured out. It's a good idea when you're going down the wilderness road and you come across somebody that you might want to ask them a question. Ask them what they're doing. Ask them what they're reading. Ask them what they're thinking. Ask them, listen to this, what they need. And so indeed, Philip asked him, what are you reading? And, and when, he, when, he, when, he, when he reads it out to him, and, 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 and Peter tell, and, and, he, and Philip, the, the eunuch tells uh, Philip that I don't understand him. I don't know what it is that I'm reading. That's the moment. That's the moment when Philip takes that moment and sits with him in the chariot and talks with him and tells him this 
tells him and explains to him what this all means. And we don't get every jot and tittle, but there is something that's happened in this ride. There is a conversion that has happened between his, his experience in Jerusalem and worship to this time with the unit, with, with Philip in his chariot. There is a transformation that begins to happen. And it happened because Philip was willing to go down the wilderness road. And this wilderness road was not the land, but the wilderness road of not letting the norms of society dictate the work of God in his life. He was willing to get in that chariot and talk to this eunuch and tell him what he knew and how he knew the Lord and how he knew Christ Jesus. And because of that, there was a transformation. And not only that, but there became an inclusivity that began to happen. And then when they got by some water, have mercy, Jesus, they got by some water, the eunuch said to him, so why can't I be baptized? Why can't I join in the flock? Why can't I be included in the fold? Why am I Why am I on the outside? Can't I just get over here and get into me some water and get baptized and listen? Philip, Philip does not hesitate. Philip does not hesitate because the spirit within him, the spirit within the Lord that's with him, says that all are welcome. Philip did not choose the Deuteronomy passage. I believe that that Philip chose the love of Christ. He chose the, the welcoming presence of Jesus Christ in his heart that there was not a question about whether this person could be baptized. It wasn't about his sexual orientation. It wasn't about the color of his skin. It wasn't about the wealth that he had. It wasn't about the family that he lived in. It was simply that he wanted to. He wanted to know the Lord all by himself. And indeed, the eunuch went into the water and Philip baptized him. Sometimes, my brothers and sisters, when you and I go down the wilderness road, we, we may not know what the result will be. Philip had no idea what to expect, but Philip went down that road anyway. Philip went down the road because he knew that the God within him had pulled him into this journey. And so therefore he went. And when he went, he met someone that was that was a cast out, that was cast upon. But indeed, he was able to turn that around and welcome him not only into the word of God, but he was able to welcome him into the spirit and into the baptismal waters of the Holy One. And indeed, we don't hear. We don't hear what happens after this because indeed the scripture tells us that immediately after this happens, that immediately after he's taken to the water, baptized him in the name of the Lord Christ Jesus, done his duty, that immediately Philip disappears. Philip does not hear the end of the story. Philip does not know how this wilderness peace really ends. A matter of fact, we're not told in scripture what happens next with the eunuch. But my friends, when you go down a wilderness road with the Lord, when the Lord calls you to stand up for justice, when the Lord calls you to stand up for mercy, when the Lord calls you to stand up for love, when the, when the, when the Lord calls you to stand up for grace, when the Lord tells you to stand up in, in the midst of the wilderness that you're in, you don't have to know the end results. It's not about what you know. It's about whether you were able to be obedient to the word of God in you. Were you willing to stand up for equality? Were you willing to stand up for justice? justice? Were you willing to stand up against the violence that is going on in and around your very neighborhoods, in and around this very city, in and around this very nation? Were you willing to just go down that wilderness road and speak to peace and to love and to grace and to Christ, what Christ would desire to say. The question is, are you willing to go down that wilderness road to, toward inclusion that, that respects and cares for everyone, every person, every human, every life? Are you willing to do that? Indeed, this text tells us, you know, this text might have been one that you might have said, well, Michael, why are you preaching this text in, in May? Isn't June LGBTQI month? And we're talking about someone who is considered uh, 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 queer sex Sexuality. No, this text is every day. We are called to welcome in everyone into God's community, whether what month it is, you know, what day it is, what year it is. We are, I, I, we are not called to sit back and, and celebrate something just because it's a month. We are called to welcome our brothers and sisters into Christ Jesus every single day. This is not a moment where you have to celebrate someone next month. What's wrong with celebrating right now? If anything you ought to know, if anything you ought to know, that, that, that waiting until tomorrow, which is not promised for you, don't wait, because you never know. I'm experiencing that every day of my life, that I do not waste time. I sat down yesterday with my daughter in a, in a park, and I looked over at her, and I said, you know, 
Justine, I am proud of you. I am proud of who you are and what you are. And I am proud of your friends and of your relationships. Why? Because I don't know where I'll be next week. I don't know where I'll be next month. But I know right now that I'm called to do the work of Christ right now. You and I are called to go down these wilderness roads, whichever one God has called you to, whichever place God is, is, is demanding you step into, whichever one the spirit of the Lord is drifting you toward, you and I are called to go down these wilderness roads because somebody needs to know that the Lord loves them. Somebody needs to know that they are welcome into the church of God no matter what other people may say. Somebody needs to know that they that they will receive God's grace and God's mercy and God's compassion. If somebody don't tell them, if you won't tell them, who will? If you won't go down the wilderness road, then who will? If you won't stand up for what is right and what is true, then who will? If you are not willing to go down that wilderness road toward inclusivity, then who will? My friends, I'm telling you right now, we as the church, you as the body of Christ are called to go down some wilderness roads whether you want to or not. Sometimes you may feel you don't have the strength. Sometimes you may feel that you don't have the power. But I want you to know that, that here's what Philip does. Philip did not ask, well, Lord, give me a good speech. The Lord, the Philip didn't ask me, well, do you know that I could be mugged or, or stopped? No, Philip didn't ask, well, Lord, can I bring somebody with me? That is not what Philip does. Because of who Philip was and because of Christ in his life, Philip said, I'm going. He didn't say it in verbal sense, but listen to what he does. He got up and he went. He got up and he ran. He got up and he baptized. My brothers and sisters, we are called to be an actionable people on that wilderness journey. We are not called to sit idly by and say, well, you know, I don't know anything. I I don't, I don't know that I can do that. I, I don't know that, that I can write a letter to my congressman or senator and tell them that, that what's going on in, in my community and my nation is not right. I don't know if I can reach out to a young man or a young woman who is struggling to, to know Christ in their life. I don't know if I can volunteer at the jail or at, a, at Care for Real. I don't know if I can do those things. And yet I can get up and do everything else I want to do. My friends. This is still Easter. It's still Easter. And we are still serving a resurrected Savior. And we are still being called by that Savior to heed and to listen and to know that there is work for us to do in the vineyard. Yes, the, 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 it is time for you and me to be willing, ready, and able to go down the wilderness road that Christ takes us. Christ will not take you anywhere you can't go and you can't handle. Christ won't lead you in any path that you cannot be, you cannot succeed in. What is the question here is, are you and I willing? Are you and I willing to go down that wilderness road? Are you and I willing to accept the challenge to welcome all, to be inclusive of all into the community of God? This is, is not a joke. We have got to find a way to include all into the kingdom and see everyone is valued whether they are gay or straight, whether they are trans, whether they're black, whether they're white, whether they're Jew, whether they're Gentile, whether they're Muslim, we've got to be able to be this sense of inclusivity, no matter who they are and what they've been through. Are we willing to sit down and be inclusive or are we gonna be exclusive? Are we gonna be excluding those because they don't think like us, they don't talk like us, they don't walk like us, they don't act like us. My brothers and sisters, that has got to go. Lord is commanding us. The Lord is telling us that whether someone is sexually queer or not, <laughs> they're welcome into my kingdom. I don't care what you think, but they are welcome into my kingdom. And an example is clear and present. Yes, someone can sit back and pull on the Deuteronomy passage, but don't. We need to look unto the heels from which all of our hope comes from. And it does come from the Lord. And I believe that, that, that Christ Jesus is telling you and me that all are included into the grace and to the mercy and to the kingdom of God. I want to close this message out this morning with a quote from Angela Davis, who I had the opportunity to hear speak a few years before I came to Chicago, who as a lesbian woman, has stood strong against gun violence, has stood strong for political issues that others would find contrary. Even though she was placed in jail for a year for something she did not commit and neither did she have control over, she stood strong. 
She still professed a strong and powerful word. And so this day, I want to leave you with her quote, because I believe this is what Christ is asking you and me today. I believe this is what we're being asked from this very text. And she says this, and I quote, you have to act as if it were possible to radically transform the world. And you have to do it all the time. You have to act as if it is possible to radically transform the world. And you have to do it all the time. This is the call for you. This is the call for me. As we go down this wilderness road toward inclusion, we must do it all the time. May God bless you. And may God keep you. And may God's grace be with you. Amen. More love, more love, the heavens are blessing, the angels are calling, oh Zion, more Amen. Amen. It is now our time for prayer to share with one another what is on our hearts, what burdens and joys we carry. When someone offers a prayer request, I will say, Lord, in your mercy, and you are invited to respond, hear our prayer. What do we have to share with one another this morning? So, there. Uh, Pastor Catherine. I'd like to, yeah, yeah, good, you can hear me. I'd uh, like to ask for prayers for the Filer family. Um, this week, we uh, unexpectedly lost uh, David's sister, Karen, and just um, ask for prayers of comfort and support and um, for everyone. What happened to her? My goodness. Karen. We will pray for, oh my goodness. we will pray for the Filer family. Um, for David um, and for all as you process this loss, um, as you enter this time of grief so unexpectedly, um, we hold it with you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. I, I would like to ask for prayer for the country of India, for the 
Dalit, the you know untouchables, and you know, please pray. I it's really uh, laying heavy on my heart because I know so many people from there. Uh, pray for India. Yes, we um, hold India in our prayers um, as the COVID pandemic surges there. Um, I also ask for prayer on that front for my sister-in-law's family. Um, my sister-in-law Mona is, is from India and um, her uncle passed away from COVID um, yesterday. Um, her parents have also been struggling with it. So I ask prayers for the Nilankanta family and for India. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. I wish I were not adding to the sadness, but I do ask for prayers for the Marchner family um, as I just found out uh, that husband Dick Marchner passed away. Uh, and so this family is in the midst of grief. So uh, we do ask for prayers for the Marchner family. For the Marchner family in this time of grief. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Um, sharing a prayer request for the family, Amy Dale and her family. Um, Amy's father um, peacefully passed away, surrounded by his family, um, I believe yesterday or maybe Friday. And um, Amy was a member of our church for some time and is now a member in Calvary Baptist in DC. <clears throat> it sounds like it was a very um, you know, loving, peaceful transition and we just pray and hold the family up. Prayers for Amy Dale and her family, again, as they process this loss, as they walk this road of grief. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Hey, I have just echoing another India prayer. My friend Sabi's cousin Benny has lost a mother, a father, and an in-law in the last three months. To oh. COVID and and her mother, she lost this past week. So just prayers for Benny Chada. Um, and then also prayers for our sister Nerto. She's just struggling right now with some kind of just disappointing personal news. So thanks. Prayers for Benny Chada in this time of grief and prayers for our sister Nerto on this, in this difficult time. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. I would like to lift up a prayer of thanks for the progress we've made so far in eradicating this devastating disease, but also a prayer petition for those who are still lingering and for the threatening effects of COVID. Mm. Yes, for the lingering specter of COVID, for the effects that it will have um, on those who are dealing with it long-term, and, and for our society um, and the long-term effects on our society. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. If we have no other prayer requests to offer aloud, I will briefly check Facebook. Do not see any prayer requests added there. Please join me in a spirit of prayer. Excuse me, Pastor Catherine. Yes. Uh, 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 I do want to lift up Sam Hartman Pickroll, who had a procedure yesterday. I haven't got any results of that yet yesterday, yesterday, but do hold him in, in our prayers. For Sam Hartman Pickerel um, on this healing journey. Lord, and, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And continue prayers for Burma. Yes. Well. We continue to hold Burma um, and the political situation and the lives that are being lost the upheaval there in our prayers. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And if we have no other prayer requests to share out loud, I will invite you to join me in a spirit of prayer. Holy God of love, we come before you today with having lifted up many prayers of grief, many words of grief, many, many loved ones that have been lost. 
God, I hold those wise words in my heart today. What is grief but love persevering? And yet it sears, and yet it hurts. Love as grief hurts. God, be present with us in the pain. Be present in us with the shock. Be present with us in all that grief brings. Be present with us in the memories in the connection and in the disconnection, the moments of isolation. Holy God, may the love of grief continue in us, continue working, change us, root us and connect us to those that we have lost. And through it, God, may they continue to live in us, may they continue to work in us May the relationship continue on. May we bear witness to the lives of those that we have lost in our actions, in our testimony, in the quiet places in our hearts. God, may we continue to hold them, even as we know that you hold them in your love, as you hold them in your arms. We hold them too. God, bind us together in your spirit. For as your spirit is not far from us, neither are those that we have lost far from us, even though they are not physically present to hug, to talk to, to break bread with. Bind us together always in your love. As you bind us at your communion table, God, bind us with those who have gone before, always in your love. And God, I pray that that love may continue to work in us, work in our bodies, work in our communities, where there is pain, where there is trauma, where there is violence, God, that our love may work for healing, that our love may be your love, working for justice, working for peace, working to bind up the brokenhearted, to make the rough places plain. God, be our light be the light of love, be the comforting darkness. And all of this I ask in your holy name as we join together to say the words that your son taught us that remain alive in us to this day. Our Father, our Mother who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Daughter, your faith has made you will go in peace. Luke 8, 48. Please join the NSBC Period Project and the Healing of Women. If you can make a one-year commitment to assist women who are experiencing homelessness or ones who are in needy circumstances, Please participate in the monthly purchase of a feminine product through our registry at Wilson Yard Target. Perhaps you can remember when we used to bring products to the sanctuary. This is a resumption of that project, but it is in a new direction. The scripture, daughter, your faith has made you well, go in peace. Are the words Jesus said to the woman who touched the hem of his garment and became well through her faith. 
we believe that our acts of faith will bring healing to our sisters in need. Our launch date is next week, May 10th. At the onset of this project, I requested that at least 10 people would make a commitment. But so far, we have 11 people who have come forth and signed up to purchase products. However, there is still no limit as to the number of people to purchase products because the need is great. So whoever is willing, please come. For more information or to sign up, you are invited to either post a note in the chat box and we will contact you or else you may contact me. I'm Peggy Ann Griffin, the project coordinator. The number is 312-402-3554. I repeat, 312-402-3554. You can also contact the chair of the mission committee, Sherry Nelson, and both of our names are in the church directory. Pastor Michael and Pastor Catherine, I want to thank you so much for giving us time to present this cause. Thank you. Sisters and brothers, we do continue to travel a wilderness road. And in thinking about communion today, as we come to eat of the bread and drink from the cup, I'm reminded that throughout Jesus' ministry, it was a wilderness road toward inclusion. As Dr. Pecky mentioned the scripture, for the woman who touched the hem of his garment and was healed. Think of the many folks who came to him who were crippled. And when he would do healings on the Sabbath day, and yet he would be questioned about how and why he would do such a thing. And I want to believe that it was about inclusion. It was not about waiting. It was about this sense of being willing to be in this wilderness. It wasn't just simply that he would go to the wilderness and be tempted for 40 days. But he was in the wilderness throughout his ministry. My friends, as we come to eat of the bread and to drink of the cup, this is a model for us about how we might journey down this wilderness road together. You see, on the night in which Jesus was betrayed, he took bread, simple bread, bread that they had just had sitting around the table. And he took it and he blessed it. And then he broke it in two. And he said to those who were gathered, this is my body, which is broken for you. Take ye and eat all of it. For as often as you eat of this bread, you do show forth remembrance until I come again. And in a similar manner, he he took a cup, a simple cup. And he said, this cup is the blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you for the forgiveness and the remission of sin. Jesus said to them that as often as you drink from this cup and as often as you eat of this bread, you do show forth remembrance until I come again. My friends, siblings, guests, let us pray. On this Easter Sunday, we come, oh God, weary and worn, become broken and tired become fearful and anxious. 
You come, O oh God, in moments of despair. We come in a moment of giving thanks and praise. We come, O oh God, just as we are, knowing, dear Lord, that you receive us as we are. You've exampled that through the word we've heard this day. No matter who we are, no matter what we've done, no matter where we've been, that God, you do not look at us from the inner, from the outside, but you look at us from the inside. And you claim us as your own. Indeed, everyone is included into the kingdom of God. Everyone is welcome into the kingdom of God. There is no little eyes and, and, and large T's. There, there is none of that. We are all welcome equally, have mercy, Jesus, into your kingdom. So, Lord, we come. We come eating of his bread, knowing of the broken places and broken spaces in our lives, knowing of the broken times that, that you had to endure, knowing the times that, Lord, that you were, were not seen as anything other than a stranger, but yet, God, you came. Yet, Jesus, you offered yourself unto us. Likewise, we come and we drink of the cup. Not because we've gotten it right, Lord. Not because we've always done as we should. Indeed, oh Lord, we have sinned and come short of the glory. We've made some mistakes on the journey. There are times when we should have gone right and we've gone left. There are times when we should have sat down and we stood up. There are times when we talked about somebody when we thought they didn't hear us. There are times when, when we've mistreated and, and, and we have been abused and scorned. But Lord, you, you said because of the cup. That we, oh God, are forgiven. That, that our past does not dictate our presence with you right now. So God, we come. We come just as we are, knowing that we've made mistakes. Knowing that we've fallen down. But holy, holy one, we know likewise that this day we can get back up again. We don't have to look back over our shoulders. We don't have to worry about what has happened in the past. We move forward from this day. So God. Christ Jesus, Holy Spirit, we come in this moment, eating of the bread and drinking of the cup in remembrance of you. Amen. I invite you, with whatever item you have, to commune with one another this day. Let us eat. Let us drink. Will you pray with me, please? Holy one in this day, we come knowing that the wilderness road, the wilderness road lays before us and we accept the challenge. We come before you knowing that in the midst of our brokenness, in the midst of our mistakes, that we are loved. Oh God, we know that we are loved. And this day we offer that love back, not only in receiving of the bread and the cup, but in the very actions we will take over this day and the days ahead. We, oh God, will share you in ways that, that, that may challenge us, that may, may pull us, but yet, Lord, we know that we are called to be your servants that we are called to watch over the flock. So God, Jesus, Spirit, come. Enter into our very being this hour. For indeed, it is why we come, that we might be lifted up, that we might go forth into the world and be the very change makers we wish to see. Oh God, this is my prayer. Amen.
Friends, again, again, I close where I begin. I stand with the cross before me and with the cross behind me. I believe it is likewise for you as well, that this day, that you have the cross before you, and likewise, you have the cross behind you. There is a wilderness road toward inclusivity that you and I are to take. May you, like Philip, may you, like many who have come before us, those saints who have come long before us, may you and I be willing to go down this wilderness road knowing that Christ has our front, Christ has our back, Christ is over us, and Christ is under us. Go. Go in the peace, love, grace, mercy of the one who cares for you long before you were ever born. Amen.